Jennifer Ferris. I am a tenant at Searle Court practicing in commercial chancery um, and I am one of the barristers who helps run the debating club at the inn. I'm Martin Nelson. I'm a barrister with the government legal department and I've been involved with debating in Lincoln's Inn for just over 12 years now. I had never debated before I came to Lincoln's Inn um, and I came along for the first time having no idea what to expect and thankfully um, Everybody was really friendly, showed me what to do, uh, and I haven't stopped debating since. Debating is a great chance to get some more time on your feet, some more practice with advocacy, um, but also to meet lots of students and barristers. Um, it's quite a welcoming, uh, casual club. Um, we pride ourselves on being very friendly. Uh, we tend to run about four workshops a term, there's no need to prepare, and in fact, you can't prepare um, because you won't know what the motion is. Uh, you turn up and you will be given a position and a partner that you'll be debating with, um, and you will be told what the motion is. And you'll have about 15 minutes to, with your partner, plan out the speeches you're going to make. Um, now, you're not going to be doing any research. It's going to be literally thinking of ways you can argue for or against the motion. So it's very, very good practice for being in court and having that moment where you think you have got everything prepared and the judge asks you a question that you never considered or a new piece of evidence comes out. Um, it's very good for learning to think on your feet. So in a debate, you take turns to argue the points that you want to argue in favor or against the motion, the thing that you're debating about. And that means that someone will speak from the proposition, and someone will speak for the opposition, and then someone else will speak for the proposition, and someone else will speak for the opposition, and you'll go like that down the table until you reach the person who speaks last. The first person to speak sets out what they think the motion means. Um, I'm first going to set out the model, and then I'm going to briefly address how our solution is going to improve access to justice um, by leveling the playing field, removing costs as a strategic consideration, and speeding up the court process. Jim will then expand upon those points in more detail. Um, so turning to the model. And then right at the end of the debate, we tend to ask the last person to speak from each side, so the last person to speak from proposition and the last person to speak from opposition, to explain what's happened in the debate and why their side should win. And an easy way to think about that is, is that you're almost a very biased reporter explaining what it is that's happened in the debate and why it is that your side won. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Jim, for, for that speech. Before moving on to my three points, which in short are about how this motion is undemocratic, about how advocates have use in the system and thirdly the redistribution of wealth. A couple of quick points of rebuttal. Side prop and Jim are talking about... In the middle, they, you will find on the internet some descriptions about roles called extension where you need to bring something new to the debate and if you know what that means and you're able to do that then great but if all of that doesn't seem to make very much sense to you then just come to us with points that you think are interesting. In a well-run debate, the chair will not do very much at all. They will help keep time for the debate and they will stop anyone from interrupting in ways that they're not supposed to and will tell them to stop speaking at the end. They'll also do one very other important thing, which is to, or either they or the person sat next to them, will mark when the floor is open for points of information, which they'll do normally by banging the table. And that's the period, the three minutes in the middle of a debate speech, when people on the other side of the debate, not on the same side as you, but on the other side of the debate, can stand up and ask a quick point of information. It's the best way to do it, and that's the way it should stay. On that point? Um, yes. Yes, well, when those people can't go into private practice, what are they going to do? Uh, but that's only in the three minutes in the middle of the speech, and the debate chair will bang the table to show when those three minutes have started and ended. And then at the very end of the debate, the debate chair will thank you all for debating and will give some general feedback 
to the room as a whole about how the debate went before everyone goes off and has refreshments and gets individual feedback. Absolutely uh, brilliant debate. I really enjoyed listening to that. Um, and I'm going to give some room-wide feedback, some general positive help in a moment. And when that's finished, we're going to have our reception and feel free to come up to me and I'll give some one-to-one -one feedback about your individual performances. But uh, I'd like to just briefly touch on... I have judged debating now since 2013 and I really enjoy it. Um, it's a great chance because we run workshops and we tend to have students coming back throughout the course of the year um, to see people improve. Uh, we often have people come into the first workshop, they're quite nervous, they maybe don't speak for more than a couple minutes um, and you give them feedback, you tell them what they might do a bit better last time, next time what they did well um, and they come back and they do better. And so over the course of the year, you can really see people gain confidence um, and improve both in their advocacy, but also in their ability to make arguments and structure those arguments. Uh, so that is very rewarding. Um, it's also because we give you personal feedback after each debate, a chance to talk to students, um, often have discussions about questions about pupillage, questions about my practice and so forth. So it's a really good chance to interact with student members um, in a more casual setting than, for example, at dinners. You will have greater confidence in dealing with questions you haven't been asked before if you come and do a lot of debating because you'll have had to think on your feet. Um, but it is also sometimes the case that chambers will have a effectively a debating question as part of the interview. So they might say to you, um, you've got five minutes to prepare and then you need to convince us that uh, we should get rid of uh, the high court judges or we should um, get rid of disclosure rules or we should uh, expand the Supreme Court. Um, and you will have to think about that and quickly try to persuade them of it. Uh, and then they might say, okay, now you have to argue the other side. So they want to see you demonstrate your advocacy skills. Um, if you have been coming to debating, that will feel quite comfortable to you um, because you'll be used to arguing things you don't necessarily agree with, um, structuring your arguments and delivering them in a style which is persuasive and compelling uh, and it will stand you in very good stead in your interviews. Part of what we aim to do at the debating club is give you lots of opportunities to try different things, not just because you'll be developing your skills, but also because, let's be honest, they look good on pupillage applications. Uh, so one of those is external competitions. Those are usually run by universities. Um, it'll be often a Saturday or a Sunday, and you and a teammate um, from the inn will go along as a team. You will have usually five or six debates over the course of the day, um, culminating in semi-finals and finals, and then a team is selected as the winner of, they're usually called IVs, or intervarsity debates. There is also often an intra-in debate. The four ends of court will, each, send, each one will send a team um, to have a debate judged by barristers, and we'll see who the winner is. Uh, we also have our own debating shield at the end of the year, so we select eight, uh, four teams, eight debaters, at the final workshop of the year. And then there is a final debating shield competition um, judged by a bencher of the inn and barrister members. Um, and the winner of that uh, gets their name engraved on the Lincoln's Inn debating shield um, and an invitation to uh, the final dinner. So that's quite a good way to cap off uh, the debating year.